Welcome to Come Follow Me. Today we're going to be talking about Alma, the 17th chapter through 22. Okay, another meanwhile back at the ranch portion of the Book of Mormon. This covers 14 years. Six chapters, 14 years. It's the story of Ammon, Aaron, Omner, Himni, and others who went with them on their mission to the Lamanites. And one of the things we discovered as we read this week was that they left on this mission the same year as the reign of the judges began. Which means they were there for that whole discussion about how to change the government, for the people to say, we want Aaron to be the king, we want Ammon to be the king, <laughs> you know, to have that whole discussion. So it also gives us a timeline then for how long Alma had been teaching, because he spent five years as the chief judge and the high priest. And when he stepped down, there was still nine more years. So all of that missionary work and all of that teaching we talked about the last week, two weeks, right? Yeah. That took nine years. It's a lot of time in so small chapters. <laughs> and this mission took 14 years. It's a long time. So we start off by Alma's wandering through the land, going to teach somebody, and the sons of Mosiah are coming back, and they meet each other, good old friends, and Right? How do you act when you meet somebody you haven't seen in a long time? <laughs> Fair. So excited. Exactly. And so one of the things that, because they went through the experience of meeting the angel. They went through the experience of repenting together. They've now had missionary experiences, all of them, Alma as well. And what is so exciting to them is they're all still faithful to the gospel. That's like, then that, that brings us up here. It would add more to his joy. They were still his brethren in the Lord. And that was so exciting to them. Yeah. Something I always think is interesting when we get here is um, how frequently the sons of Mosiah and um, Alma are falling to the earth. They lose their strength and fall to the earth, especially Ammon. He seems to have a preclusion for that. <laughs> <laughs> But our scripture this week that we thought would be good for memorizing is in chapter 17, and it's verse 3. And I think one of the reasons we liked this one is that it talked about the importance of not only prayer when we're trying to do the things we're supposed to do, but the power of fasting. Remember in the, Old, in the New Testament when the Savior, uh, he'd been away and he came back and some of his apostles said, well, we tried to cast out this evil spirit, we tried to heal this person, and we couldn't do it. What did we do wrong? And his words to them were, this kind cometh not out but by fasting and prayer. Sometimes we have to add something more to our prayer. Fasting is one of them. And so what this says, and, and you can skip the but this is not all if you want to when you memorize this, they had given themselves to much prayer and fasting, therefore they had the spirit of prophecy and the spirit of revelation, and when they taught, they taught with power and authority of God. Okay, so power comes from God. It comes through the priesthood, right? That kind of power. Does that mean we as women can never teach with power? No. 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 Why are we able to teach with power when we don't hold the priesthood? Because of the Holy Ghost. Because of the Holy Ghost. And because the priesthood has been restored. Okay. And so that's really important to understand that power only comes to the worthy and the righteous. And that's really, really important there. So they have been off teaching. And of course, we won't spoil too much, but they've got a rather large group of people with them as they return. Um, <laughs> but they've been off on a mission. And they, when they left, what did they take? Weapons, weapons. for hunting. Weapons, weapons for hunting. They didn't take their weapons to try to fight with the Lamanites. That's what all the people wanted them to do. Let's just go kill them all, right? No, they took their weapons so they could hunt and provide food for themselves along the way. If you notice, every time Ammon uses something in defense, and like one of his weapons, it's in defense of someone else. That's true. That's true. Never in his own defense. So that is very interesting. And so they are traveling and they're recognizing the Spirit of the Lord teaching them and comforting them. And Randy, you mentioned earlier, verse 11, when we were talking about this. Uh, what did you think about that one? Um, I loved how 
in a way you can say that they didn't go into it not knowing what was going to happen. Because mm -hmm. the Lord tells them that they would ha need to be patient in their long and have long suffering in their afflictions. So that they could show forth a good example. Right. And also that he would make them an instrument in his hands to bring many souls to the gospel. Mm -hmm. And so they weren't going in blindly like, oh, what's going to happen? It's right. There's going to be success and God's going to help us. Mm -hmm. And Mosiah had been told the same thing when he prayed about it. I will protect your sons and they will have great success in bringing the Lamanites. And and yeah. He will bring them back to him. Yeah. And they're going out at about 90 BC, so we're talking about 500 years of history that they have not been able to reclaim the Lamanites. Is it any wonder everybody laughed at them? <laughs> 500 <laughs> years of trying to reclaim the Lamanites and no success, and you think you're going to do it? <laughs> right? <laughs> so off they go, and they're getting ready to separate to different areas. It's a large area of land that they're going to go teach in. And Ammon gives everybody a kind of a setting apart type of a blessing. It's kind of interesting because it appears that Ammon happens to be their spiritual leader, mm -hmm. even though out of the four sons, Aaron is the oldest. That's true. That is true. But he does seem to be the spiritual leader. And he heads off into the land where King Lamoni lives. Now, I don't think any of these stories, if you're familiar with the Book of Mormon at all, these stories are probably not something new to anybody watching. Because what do we have? We have Ammon going into the land of King Lamoni and meeting Lamoni and protecting the sheep and teaching Lamoni and defending Lamoni against his father. And then we have them going to Madoni to free Aaron and his brother from prison. And then Aaron teaching King Lamoni's father. These are, these are familiar stories. You know, one of the things that just kind of caught me as we were talking about this was the fact how um it just I kind of like realized that um when so when Lamoni offers his daughter to Ammon I was like you know I can't I, I won't do that and then um uh, how he uh, says you can take care of the sheep but I kind of noticed how how the sheep is kind of a punishment it does feel like a punishment when you know that he's killed his other servants if they lost his sheep he went from the high and holy place of, will you marry my daughter, to... You can go take care of the sheep or I might kill you later. <laughs> <laughs> kill you later. <laughs> so, yeah, it does. It almost feels like, well, fine, you don't want to marry my daughter? <laughs> you can take care of my sheep. Now, let's talk about that story about taking care of the sheep. Because off they go, this is, you know, and I don't know how long they've been taking care of the sheep. But three they go, days. They go, three days. They go to get some water at the waters of Sebus. There's some men there that, a couple of things. One, they like to steal other people's sheep. Two, they like to get King Lamoni's servants killed. That's actually something they enjoy. That's a bloodthirsty people. These people are going to listen to the gospel? What? <laughs> <laughs> and so Ammon, when those sheep are scattered, looks at this situation with different eyes than any of us might. <laughs> I, the way I said this earlier is these people have like the weirdest moments of happiness or joy. <laughs> it's like when Alma falls to the earth and passes out for three days and they go and tell Alma the elder and he's like, woohoo, I mean, um, we need to pray. <laughs> <laughs> and then the sheep get scattered. All the other servants are like, oh no, we're dead. And Alma's like, woohoo. We got this, guys. Let's, let's go get the sheep. <laughs> he recognizes an opportunity for them to see Heavenly Father's power. So he says, let's go gather the sheep. Now, if you, we live in an area where there are often sheep being driven down the road. And <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> they, they scatter quite easily. There's not much, not much effort to scatter sheep. And so, <laughs> but they go and they round them all up. And Ammon is miraculous. He uses his sling. Have you ever tried to... <laughs> yes. <laughs> Accuracy is non-existent when I use such a We're sling. We're not talking about slingshot, right? We're talking about David and Goliath. <laughs> We're talking about David and Goliath show slingshot. So what this looks like is like maybe a small square or oblong piece of material 
with string attached at either end. And this is like a pocket for the stone. And they hold, they have one wrapped around this finger, and they hold this one like this, and they whip that thing around. It goes so fast. It goes faster than a bullet. They normally circle it like this. So this this way or this way. And then you let the one string go, and you have to let go at the right time in the circular motion so it doesn't go that way. (laughs) And this is your target. I've used a sling before, and we were shooting at a telephone post. I put a rock in there, and I was like this, and I thought, okay, I got this. Choo. The rock's going, shoo, <laughs> off over. I'm going, you're lucky you're like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so it's, it takes a yeah. real effort yeah. to learn how to use it and to use it accurately. Yeah. So if you want to get a feeling for what that's like, just kind of make one. Take a square of material, put some string on it. Don't use rocks. <laughs> no. no. Use something soft like a little marshmallow. We've done this. <laughs> Marshmallows don't work. Marshmallows fly, just not like a stone. Or you can use a piece of paper, a wadded up piece of paper. You want to use something that kind of has weight because that's kind of what helps yeah. circular. Marsh. Just not something that's going to break a window or take out an eye. So be careful with this. But maybe try that a little bit. Try that practice of how would you see. He's able to, anybody who comes at him, he's able to take them out. And then anybody who comes, and then they're frustrated, right? Because like, there's one guy, and he's, he's killing us all. Oh, he's so destroying us. So here's what I thought was interesting, because it says that they were in number, not a few. Yes. And I always, for some reason, imagined there was like five or six guys coming at him, and he actually killed about five or six guys with the sling. With the sling. And he only killed their leader with the sword. And everybody else, every time their clubs came up, ka-choo! Where'd my arm go? Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what happens. He, they're able to water the sheep. The servants gather up the arms. Oh, so nasty. <laughs> it's so gross. <laughs> ah. Let's pick up these arms and take them to the king. <laughs> right? If you notice in the book of movie, the servants just like... Yeah. But, I mean, they need their proof, right? They need their proof that this happened. But before they went, King Lamoni had said, prepare my horses, I need to go to a feast being prepared by my father. So they come back and they tell the king all about it, and where's Ammon? Preparing the horses. Faithfully, obediently doing what he was told to do. Obedience. Obedience is such an important factor in faith. Well, that really impressed Mm -hmm. Lamoni too. Absolutely. That he would remember that. Absolutely. Especially after such craziness. I mean, you think like, woohoo, you all come in and be telling the king. But no, he goes and he gets the horses and chariots ready. And this amazing, amazing missionary experience now. He comes in, he's got the horses ready. They're all ready, and everybody's standing there looking at him. Well, maybe I'll just back out now. And then one of those servants stops him and is like, he actually wants you to stay. And then he sits there for an hour. It's a long sit. Can you imagine, Emma, if you walked in to see me, I called for you, and then I just sat there and looked at you for an hour? <laughs> for an hour? I, I wouldn't be able to stand. I would I just be like, <laughs> do you think he had like, just a blank facial expression, or would he have like this look of... I... <laughs> <laughs> Is he going to trance? <laughs> no, that was later. <laughs> and so finally, after an hour, Emma, the spirit starts to speak to him. All right? His obedience... His faithfulness allows the spirit to lead him in this. And so he begins to speak. And then Lamoni asks him questions like, I know you can read my mind, but I'm going to go ahead and talk, right? It's a little bit easier than this mind thing. And <laughs> seriously. Um, and he starts asking him questions. And Ammon is a very, well, he's good with words. Remember what he did before he repented. <laughs> he was going about to destroy the church. So it's not as if he didn't know how to uh, get people's attention. And so what he says to the king, because the king asked him a question, he says, Wilt thou hearken unto my words if I tell thee by what power I do these things? And this is the thing that I desire of thee. Because the king promised him anything he wanted. I want you to believe me. And the king says, Yea, I will believe all thy words. It's like, one of, those, it's like one of those moments when he's like, 
Easy enough. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> thus he was caught with guile. Now, this is different than Alma teaching all of the Nephites who are members of the church or apostate members of the church, right? These are people who do not know the gospel in any way. So you see a different kind of missionary work. Even like the very thought of God, they're yeah. like, what is God? Just no concept of a God. Is that the great spirit? Yes, that's the great spirit. <laughs> <laughs> do you believe in the heavens and the earth? Well, the earth I know, but I don't know the heavens. I mean, just no knowledge. Something we can't comprehend. We cannot comprehend. Because we've had the gospel in our lives for a very long time. For us five, we've had it from our birth. Your dad was a convert at the age of 15. So that's a lot of years of knowing. He remembers questions that he had. Questions that he didn't have answers for. But we've had this our lives. And so it's kind of hard to comprehend that you have to start... And even describing God and that there is a and heaven. The creation and, and yeah. So he takes him through the creation. He talks about their history. Yes. <laughs> Lamoni has to believe that his history is wrong. That's like the most amazing step. And I think probably one of the most vital of the whole mission is that these people have to admit that they were wrong. Yeah. They have to believe that they've been wrong their whole lives. Mm-hmm. Well, but then you see his father later, who you see the example of this false tradition. Because he finds Lamoni with Ammon, this Nephite, and is like, What on earth are you doing with the son of a liar? Right. Wow, they have some strong feelings about Nephi. <laughs> <laughs> and so you see a very interesting. So, one of the things that, that you'll want to do as you read through this, or as you talk about this as a family, is you're going to want to talk about what is it he's teaching them. What is it that's needed for these people to be taught? He's letting the Spirit guide him in what he needs to teach. This is more first, first discussion other than him and I hope. Oh yes, most definitely. And of course, Lamoni does believe and he falls to the earth. As if he were dead. And nobody's ever seen anything like this except Ammon. <laughs> and then you have this beautiful story. They take him into the queen. She sits with him for two days. And everybody's trying to tell her that he stinks. They need to bury him. And she calls for Ammon. And Ammon's very happy about this. It's exactly what he wanted. And he said to her that she, he wasn't dead. And tomorrow at this time, he gives her a time, he will arise. And so she goes, faithfully sits by her husband, because she didn't think he was dead, she didn't think he was stinking already, I mean, other than just normal stink of being human, right? Well, I smell. No. But she believes him. And notice how many days. Notice the symbolism of three days of being in this vision or this trance. And then he awakens, and he starts teaching his wife, and he and his wife and the servants and Ammon all fall to the earth again. Except for Abish. Except for Abish. <laughs> And she goes and gathers the people. What's their reaction? Anger. The anger of several different kinds. Yes. <laughs> Some are mad at Lamoni for letting the Nephite stay. Mm -hmm. And they say that will that's what brought the curse. Some say that Lamoni brought it upon himself for killing his servants. Mm -hmm. And then others are just mad at Ammon because, well, they're armless and... Um, <laughs> <laughs> There's some men there from the waters of the sea. <laughs> they're armless and, well, one of them has a brother who's dead. So... Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. And we see a very miraculous saving of Ammon, because what did the Heavenly Father promise Mosiah? Your sons will not die. So up comes the sword to take off Ammon's head, or however and, and, and this one is dead, though. <laughs> He's also dead. dead. And now what is the people's reaction? They think Ammon is a monster. <laughs> He's a monster sent over from the Nephites, too. <laughs> Some, Some also thought he might have been um, the Great Spirit. The great Spirit. Or sent the the great spirit. Great spirit. Spirit. And so Abish is like, oh, this is not what I was after. But also, we have to realize that people blaming Lamoni for this quote unquote curse mm -hmm. is totally a foreign to their belief system because before this, Lamoni would have believed that he could do nothing wrong. Right, they really didn't believe in sin. Really didn't believe in sin. 
So you can see how deeply you can really talk about this. And of course then, when Ava sees all the contention, she touches the hand of the queen. The queen arises and sees all of it. She touches the hand of the king. The king arises and he starts to teach his people. So we have this conversion of an entire land. I think it's interesting that it is the leader that started the process. It is not always the way it happens in missionary work, but here with the Lamanites, in both cases, could it have worked with, any other way? Both with the Lamoni and with, and his, with father. his father. Could it have worked any other way? If you'd have started converting these lower people, what would have probably happened? And so, in this case, he's immediately able to bring a leader in. And then we know the story of heading off to the land of the Madonai, running into King Lamoni's father. One of the things I always like to know about this is when Ammon takes down the Lamoni's father, he says, I'll give you anything up to half of my kingdom if you don't slay me. And all he wants is Lamoni to keep his kingdom, that his brother can get out of prison, and Lamoni can do what he wants. Okay? And the king's just like, cool, go ahead. Okay, and, he and he says, I want you to come and talk to me after you get your brother out of prison. So they do. They head over to Madonna. And what's happened with Aaron and all these guys? They've been tied up for... Yeah, they end up among the Amalekites who are Nahors. And they're in prison. And they ended up in prison. They didn't... The, the interesting thing about Amalekites is you see an Antichrist argument here. Because what is it? All people will be saved. There is no Christ. And so these people in this area are more hard because they have had apostates from the Nephites there to harden them. That wasn't the case where Lamoni was. There was no one there to harden him more against the Nephites. It's not as if the Lamanites don't have bad feelings, but there was no one there to make it worse. But they do get out of prison. Ammon and Lamoni go back to their land. Aaron ends up going to teach the king. What's interesting about Aaron teaching among the Amalekites is... He must have told them his conversion story mm -hmm. because the Amalekite who's confronting him is like, are we not as good as you to see an angel? And I can imagine Aaron thinking to himself, well, you actually are kind of close to where I was. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did have an angel come visit you? I don't know. Because <laughs> his experience with an angel was not a good experience. Good job. There was a... Stop what you're doing or destroy yourself yeah. after the church mom. <laughs> so it's very, very interesting, this process. But they go to teach King of Moni's father. Let's talk about that for just one minute before we close up here. So King of Moni, he specifically asked Ammon to come back and teach him. So The father um, of King of Moni. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's yeah, all right. And, um, and then Al Aaron comes and it's just like... Where's Ammon? Where's Ammon? And they say, the spirit has called him another way. And it's like, but that's the question that's been bothering me. What is the spirit? What is this spirit? <laughs> it was also a very good way to answer that question. <laughs> it is a very good way to answer that question. You're and you're like, oh, this is my life easier. <laughs> <laughs> that too. Oh, could you imagine if he was just like, um, he decided not to, um... Yeah, um, he, he did follow your orders, but... Yeah, no. <laughs> Bad news. <laughs> and Eric goes through the same kind of process with him. Because he doesn't know what the spirit is. And he said, what does an Adam said? If you'll repent, you'll be saved. And if you won't, you'll be cast off the last day. What does he mean by that? He's been thinking about this. Very deeply. <laughs> this has been bothering him. Just kind of working at him, kind of grating away his spirit. And he said, believe us thou there is a God. And he said, well, the Amalekites say there is one. I let them build some synagogues. But if you tell me there's a God, I'm going to believe you. <laughs> it's like a lay down. <laughs> Tag! Oh, I win. <laughs> so much for that wrestling match. I hope you enjoyed the videos of wrestling. They were very interesting to make. <laughs> um, but they do the same thing. He promises to believe what he'll be taught. And I love his prayer. And love his prayer. So remember back when Ammon is almost has, has him down on the ground, and he says, "I'll give you anything up to half of my kingdom." What does he say now? I will give up to all. Of I will my give kingdom. everything to know God. And I will give away my sins to And I will give away my sins. Now it would be hard way hard to give away everything you want. Mm -hmm. The sins 
We like those. Or we wouldn't do them. Especially if they were created into habits because of way of yeah. life. That's our comfort. This is what we know. It's what we do. You know, sinning isn't good, and we do need to try to root that out of ourselves. But his prayer, I will give away all my sins to know thee. They have to realize that they believed that the king could do no wrong. Right. And so he was kind of left to do whatever. Mm -hmm. But now he's finding out that uh, maybe everything isn't so cool after all, and maybe I need to make some changes in yeah. my life. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So he, this prayer happens, and here we go again. Passes Boom. <laughs> Except this time the servants haven't had the experiences as to sing of Ammon and what had happened. Mm -hmm. And then the queen walks in and it all Well, they go and find the queen. Right. With Ammon, he had an ex not only experience, he had a relationship. Here. Nephi's just walked into the palace. And yeah, and, and they, they, they heard all out. this, but it's probably it's still really confusing to them. So they head off to the queen, she comes in. Kill him. Oh, uh, we, we just saw what happened. These, These guys, guys are powerful. powerful. I don't want to <laughs> go get the people. Oh, come on. Yeah. And Aaron realizes his life is greatly in danger, and so they, you know, they, they do. They wake up the king, and he teaches his people. And so religious freedom is proclaimed through the entire land of the Lamanites. The stage is set for the Lamanites to be able to come to a knowledge of the truth. To recognize that they've been taught the wrong history. And what you believe about history is going to affect your actions. But let's think about this. Are you going to believe a prophet? Or a liar? An apostate? Because that's really what you have. You have Nephi who's a prophet and follows God. And you have Laman and Lemuel who's an apostate. And we see this a little bit even with some of our history right now. You see Joseph Smith who was a prophet. Mm -hmm. Versus a Philassus Hurlbut who said, I'll wash my hands in your blood, an apostate. And you see some of that going on right now with our history. And so if you get confused about a history question, you need to go back and look at the source. Who said it? Because if, if Joseph Smith said it and you believe the church is true, you ought to believe what he said. Otherwise, you believed in a liar, and why would anything else he said be true? And so the same thing here, they're having to come to terms with the fact that they have believed lies. They're having to put all of that away. That would be a huge shift. A huge shift. And we'll find out when we talk next week how big a shift that really was. How it changed these people's hearts. And it's beautiful. So... I hope, I hope you enjoyed enjoy these stories this week. Again, I, I don't think these are unfamiliar stories at all for most people. But look at what they taught. Look at the uh, power of the Spirit and what it can do in life when truth comes to the forefront. All right. So, till we meet again. If you've enjoyed our videos, give us a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. And don't forget to find and follow us on Facebook.